I wanted to one th say one thing going back to some of the benefits to self-employed people. Um, sure. You know, let's say you're a sole proprietor, uh, you're struggling to make ends meet, you're, you're, or maybe you're successful, and you're just trying to figure out how can I take advantage of all the stimulus that's come out related to COVID-19. Well, what they've done is they've allowed you um, the ability to take a tax credit for your share of, of the or the half of the employer empl self-employment tax, mm. and you'll take that. Um, on your 2020 tax return as a self-employed person. So right now, the benefit to you would be being able to reduce your estimated tax payments as a self-employed person. Um, and the credit house calculated is um, up to 511 per day. The lesser of that number, 511 per day uh, for up to 10 days, I believe, or the lesser of your net self-employment income. So um, if you don't show a lot of income on your Schedule C, your self-employment form, you know, unfortunately, it may not have that much of a credit coming to you under the COVID-19 stimulus, but no, they haven't forgot about you. I mean, there is a credit uh, that's going to be available to you, but there's going to be a calculation that we're going to be doing on your 2020 return to take that credit, even if you have no employees. So if you're, uh, what I'm hearing out of this is if you are good at on-the-fly adjustments to your withholdings, then you can you can make that adjustment and, and put more cash in your pocket today. If you're struggling with the fact that you're now working and then also a teacher and also you know like ha have like nine hats at home, it's something where if you don't make any changes, you'll probably have overwithheld because you'll get this credit when you file in April of 2021, and then you'll just get a larger mm -hmm. return than normal. Is that a, is in that a fair cases, way of saying it? Yeah. yeah, in some cases for sure. I would say for our self-employed clients. Um, you know, uh, for right now, do what you need to to, to uh, survive, so to speak. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, keep your cash, pay your minimal living expenses. Um, we can always adjust your third quarter uh, estimates that are due uh, September 15th, uh, your fourth quarter estimates that are due by January 15th of 2021. Those can be adjusted. We can also, if there happens to be any penalty for underpayment on your 2020 return, we can always use one of the exceptions to the penalty, like the annualized income installment method that actually looks at the seasonal nature of your income in any given year and uh, at least, you know, minimize. You can uh, out. Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's ways around it. So okay. I just want to you know, make sure people feel taken care of and uh, don't feel like you have to make those typical Q1 and Q2 payments, even though they're extended to July 15th. Uh, there are ways also uh, that we can take a look later, later in the year and, and do some tax planning, which is really no. key. Yeah, I think that's great information for for the that self-employed group out there who probably, as you point out, right now feels maybe a little left out in the cold, uh, you know, because they 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 don't qualify for this bucket, they don't qualify for that bucket, they you know, yeah, n nothing seems to be really geared towards them. Yeah. Uh, the only last thing would be, you know, some of the rules they enhanced, uh, they've allowed some special carrybacks now on net operating losses. Uh, so if you do have a loss, you know, again, uh, you, they're trying to find ways to get money back in the taxpayer's pockets. So if you have a loss that normally you wouldn't be able to carry back under the uh, Tax Cut and Jobs Act, the new act uh, from 2017, they're now suspending those rules and you can carry back your losses up to five years. And so uh, talk with your accountant about filing the forms to get that done. So you can take those losses in this year and carry it back for up to five years to maybe get a refund on tax you paid in, in an open year in the last five. Uh, that may help other taxpayers as well. Uh, they've also uh, modified the rules on how much you can carry back um, to offset prior income. Um, and they've also made uh, some technical corrections uh, on some how they can uh, taxpayers can claim bonus depreciation on uh, qualified improvement property to accelerate the deductions that uh, uh, maybe uh, landlords and people with rental properties can take uh, on their leasehold improvements. So little tweaks here and there. There's tons of things in this, um, the CARES Act, that uh, may or may not apply to everybody. But uh, if it applies to one person, it may be a huge win for them. So just talk with your CPA. Yeah, and I was about to say that what the lesson I'm hearing there, because more than likely, if if you fall in that bucket where you have uh, net operating losses or or whatnot, and you're you're dealing with tracking carrybacks, my hope is that those people are engaged with a with a accounting professional like yourself, and um and so then the the lesson I'm hearing here is now is a great time to get in touch with your CPA because they have they have additional tools that they can put to bear, not just in this in this time frame, but also looking back at the past couple of years, uh, as you said, to put more cash in their pockets today. Yeah, more than ever, it's so important to be working with an advisor, not just a tax preparer. Mm -hmm. You want to be making sure you're working with someone who actually is planning with you and not just filling out your tax forms. So it's a good point. Yeah.
Perfect. Well, Clint, thank you so much for, for joining us today. I, I really appreciate me. it. Good to see you again.